Hello, good evening, and welcome to the RCB Sports Show. My name is Noel Green, and joining me are RCB regulars Nicholas Ring and Jim Conlon. On this evening's show, we'll discuss the Clare County Football and Hurling Championship and how the championship structure for 2020 will work out with sports journalist Seamus Hayes and Paddy McMahon. If you want to contact the show, you can leave any comments or opinions on our Facebook page, RCB Sport, on our Twitter account, at RCB Sport. You can listen to us on 92.5 and 94.8 FM in West Clare and online at www.rcb.ie. You can also listen on the TuneIn app on your phone, lap, tablet or laptop and catch up, on, catch up with us on the RCB Sport YouTube channel. First thing I'd like to do is to welcome our special guests, Seamus Hayes and Paddy McMahon. Paddy, I started with yourself, if I may. Uh, just a general question. For a long time this year, there was a real fear. We wouldn't have any EJ anywhere. But we have a plan for club and county. How relieved are you that Jay is back? Now, as we know, it's granted, but uh, it's back. Yeah, I know. Um, great to join you again. I suppose um, before we we began the discussion, the last the last time we were on, the feeling amongst all of us contribution was that there probably wouldn't be a championship. So I guess it's great that that it's coming back in some guys, and you can even see with the pitches reopening, people are. They're not flocking to the field, but it's great that they're able to go, whether it's down with a few footballs and, and kicking the ball over the bar or getting to the hurling wall ball. So there has been a relief and it's been great, even from a mental health point of view, you know, for a lot of people's well-being to go out somewhere new and to get to the pitch and just to meet people you haven't met in a while. Yeah. And I know teams are back. Um, so the lads are meeting their friends and girls that are on the Camogie and ladies football teams are meeting people they've been dying to meet for a while. So it's um, very positive and hopefully... Um, Hopefully there won't be any consequences in terms of uh, increasing cases of COVID-19. Well, here, here, here's top. But I suppose we'll start with the Clare County structure for 2020. It might be a little bit different from the last couple of years. But we'll start with the hurling. Uh, can you explain to us to all our hurling listeners and viewers how the 2020 Clare uh, hurling chapter is going to work out? Okay, yeah, no, no bother, no. So I'm sure Seamus can interrupt me anyway if I if I go astray with any of this. So from the hurling point of view, the the, the previous years it, it has changed in that you your first round you're just pit it's an un, open draw, eight teams versus eight. Um the winning eight teams then are as opposed to previous years where there would have been a winner section and um, a loser section. First round, as has been said last night, is a bit of a dead rubber. So you're going to have teams um, going through into the second round once they win. The eight winner, winners from round one will play the eight losers. And then whoever wins that second round game is going to advance to the, the quarterfinals. And then you're left with your eight teams there. And then it's quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, if I'm correct. And then the same format will be kept for the intermediate hurling championship. Okay, so each team roughly get it's a guarantee of two matches, is that correct? I'm trying to follow it the best I can. <laughs> yeah, two matches is, is a guarantee. Um, and then at the board meeting there on Monday, intermediate close, we're maybe hoping that there'd be a second, because there will be a senior B championship in the senior of some sort for teams that don't progress to the quarterfinals. So the teams in the intermediate championship, we're hoping there would maybe be an intermediate B championship or something just to keep lads playing because we know teams are, are allowed to train since the since early June so they have been training and they've been putting in a big effort so just clubs are hopeful that they'll maybe get more than two games for, for their efforts And do you think this 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 this, way, this championship structure do you think it's going to work do you think it, it, it's as best as we can get it? Um, well there was d dissenting voices I suppose expressed at the county board meeting that some people felt what was there for the last previous years in terms of um having a winner section, um, a loser section, and then the round three that you had, you had the, you had a, a trap door to fall through, I suppose you could afford to lose a game. Whereas I, there is a bit of um, disagreement with the first round being not too much yeah. of an impact. But as I have said to people that are against it, if you just win your first game, win your second game, keep winning. Yeah. That's what teams really have to worry about. Winning can be winning can be a good habit and get get you momentum. Uh, Seamus, what's your uh, opinion on? Uh, as we mentioned, uh, it's great that we have GA. There's a long time we were fearing it wouldn't happen, but it's great that it's back. And what's your opinion on the, the club structures at the moment? Well, I suppose first of all, it's great that it's back, and uh, the hope would be that there are no relapse and that there are no uh, cases of of coronavirus uh, going to interrupt the, the the progress of the competition. 
Uh, you know, at the, at the county board meeting last night, yes, I say a number of clubs came in hoping to change uh, the format to what was there last year or to four groups of four. Uh, but I think credit to the, the master selections committee who put it together for their explanations as to why they came up with this format rather than any other format. And I think that as the night went on last night, a number of clubs changed their view. Clubs that would have come in uh, gung-ho for looking for change from what was proposed, uh, finished up voting for what was proposed. You know, uh, I know the Six Mile Bridge proposed last year's format, seconded by Cratlow, uh, with the proviso that it start on the uh, 17th, 18th of July, and straight away, three or four clubs changed their mind. They weren't happy about starting that early. In fact, it was too soon that they wouldn't be ready, and they needed, they needed at least another week. So there, there was a change there in, 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 for a number of clubs. You know, uh, I suppose it, it, John Lineson Ryan put a very good point at the end of the meeting last night. He said, we're living in very strange times, and it's going to be known going forward as the COVID championship. And he said, it's as simple as that people have to adopt for this particular year and hope that things will work out. Because a couple of months ago, as Paddy said at the outset there, uh, we all felt that there may not have been any competition of any description this year. Uh, now, there are championships both at club level and inter-county level, and uh, hopefully there won't be any interruption and that things will go ahead. Uh, it may not be the format that the majority would have liked at the, at the outset, but it is a format, and uh, every club is guaranteed a minimum of two games. And if you take the senior B, uh, into account, uh, I'd say all clubs will get a minimum of three games. And, uh, you know, the committee went away last night uh, to say, with the request to look at an intermediate fee, and I think that they're going to come back with, that they will factor in that, you know, down the line. So uh, I think, you know, it's just something different, but it's something that uh, people have no choice with this year, and I think clubs will just focus on that now and get ready. Like, there will be, uh, of course, there's going to be excitement in the opening rounds because you will. Uh, have a couple of big guns clashing, uh, and you may have two. You know, you may have two. You may have half your, as we call them, top seeds gone by round two. You know, if they don't, if they don't win in round two, they're out. And uh, you know that's going to happen. But I suppose uh, it's like the old days. Uh, if you're going to win a championship, you have to be prepared to beat everybody. So you know, it's it's, uh, it's an equal playing field from that point of view. Sure, is uh, Dickus, if I if I can bring you in here. Uh... The two boys have mentioned that it's strange times, bizarre times. We were fearing that there wouldn't be any club or county uh, championships at all this year. But we have a structure, uh, senior and intermediate. Um, what's your opinion that GA, the GA is back? P, P, tra uh, teams are training. They're all set for the end of July for the football. and No, uh, July for the hurling and the start of August for the football. What's your opinion on how the championship is happening? Yeah, I think uh, it's well explained by party and Seamus there. I, th I think, you know, the structure is good. Uh, that they finalised last night, like, because uh, it, it is strange times. And, and you know, if we had gone back to last year's format, I think, and bring the two, to, uh, bring the week or two early, and I think it would be too many games. You have to you have to remember, and I don't like bound down to, to county managers, but I think Brian Lawan has been very fair in what he's asked for. And that is that he has 11 playing field with Limerick, which, uh, you know, this structure allows him to get his team back, you know, for three weeks or whatever before the championship. And and I think that's fair, fair play to Ryan Lohan, like, and it's fair play to the clubs, I think. You know, you get, you guarantee two games, you might go into the, to the senior B if, if you're beaten. But, you know, it's a level playing field, as Seamus said there, and it's a, it's a, it's... It's an unusual year. I, I mean, four or five weeks ago, a couple of months ago, we would have we would have taken this no problem. I think every club would have taken what's on offer now. And it's a chance to get players back into, you know, they're back training now, and it's great to see that some, you know, my own lucky pitch and they're back training. Young fellas bursting the gut, mad to go, and and I'm sure it's, that's the same all over the county. And I, I think it's a it's, it's a good format. It's it, it, it's 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 the best to, uh, under the circumstances. And I think you know you have two chances. Like the first day is probably a dead rubber, but you get back, get you back hurling. Maybe that's a good thing. You get get teams back on the on the pitch and have a game. And as Paddy said, they are like you go out and win your first game, you win your second game. And as Seamus said, if you're good enough, you know you can't pick and choose where the draw is going to go. So if you go, if you're going to win a championship, it doesn't matter which who comes along because you have to beat the best anyway. And and uh, I I think it's very fair. 
I was very happy with the way the county board ran, ran the whole thing last night in difficult circumstances uh, and how they, 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 they got everybody in and, and, and Joe Coney did an excellent job in sharing it and was well able to answer all the questions like he brought in the, the proper people like to explain it, you know, and from that point of view, I thought it was very good as well. So I, I'm, I'm very happy with what was decided last night. I know other clubs had different views, a few clubs, the bridge and, 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 uh, and uh, Cratlaw especially, but um, I, I, I'm not too sure where, you know, the time, the time was the thing, like, and if, if you get caught up in, 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 in the, you know, the, the time is too, is too narrow, the wind is too narrow, and, and for last, year, last year's format, it would have taken up too much time, and we don't know what's going to happen, like, at the moment. I mean, the radio today all day is talking about, in the media, national media, about flights going, you know, the Ryanair and Aer Lingus are meant to fly people all over the world, and they'll be coming back in a couple of weeks' time, and we just don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to scare them or anything, but uh, you know, I think this, this, the five weeks is, is, is as much as we can really we we can hope for, and I think that's a good way, like to not extend it too much and putting people under more pressure. So it's 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 best to look to everyone, and everyone has the same chance, and I, I'm happy with it anyway. Definitely not. Is it is it a big p positive, I suppose, with clubs? I mean, everyone would agree that the campaign the mass gatherings of thousands of people into county centre. So club was always going to come back first and, and rightly so because the players themselves wanted clubs to come back first. And the fact that we've guaranteed uh, into July and August, those two months are just club club players and club games only. And in the county championship, I believe it's not it's due to start in October. So it's great that they have those guaranteed weeks that those matches will be played in the Nicholas. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm sorry. It, it, I think it's uh, very important that clubs Get the get, get the line right for for want of a better way of putting it. The whole focus is on clubs now until the end of September, you know. And I think that's something that had been slipping away from the GA, and by accident, if you like, I suppose. And this pandemic has uh, caused a lot of change. But you know, if one good thing comes out of this from a GA perspective, maybe it will be that the the focus will fall back on the club because it had been drifting away from the club, you know. We all love watching the inter-county games and obviously they're huge and they've been fantastic games in the round robins uh, system and the super rates and football for the last couple of years. You know, we've all we've all enjoyed them. But the club has been suffering, you know, and you have to the, the club is the lifeblood of the whole of the whole organization and it, 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 it's so vital in every parish. And I think we saw that during this pandemic the way club people came out uh, and put their shoulders to the wheel and helped out in every facet within the community and helped out. Uh, elderly people and did the shopping and whatnot, you know. And I think that uh, the, the whole focus has to be on the club. And uh, going back to the other point, Nicholas Tustin there, there is credit due to the current county managements who have, you know, accepted this and they have said that once they have their players for the couple of weeks before they play the championship, they'll be quite happy, you know. And it's great that they that they're buying into this as well. And hopefully that will be the case. And obviously, as teams are knocked out, uh, unfortunately for those teams, but as they are knocked out. The players on those teams will be able to resume training with the county, and you know by the middle of September, the majority of players will be available to the county, except those who are in the concluding stages of the club championships. So I, you know, I think that all sides deserve credit for the way they put this together. And uh, yes, it is a different championship and it's a new format, but you know, the, the times have changed and we're in a different situation. We're living in a totally different world, so you know we have to go along with it. I think um, I sense, um, sorry, sorry, Jim. I just think um, I think Crow Park missed a big trick this year. I think they could have went and just gave, like Seamus said, the clubs are in their limelight. But I think they could have given him the whole year. You know, made it a club only year instead of rushing off the inter county championship like they put out these pennant. You know, I'd said teams weren't supposed to be back before I think September fourteenth or something. Mm -hmm. And there are, I think Brian Lohan, from what I can gather, isn't back, and the care footballers aren't back. But other counties in Munster are back already. And you had the GA president and director general coming out last week and saying there won't be any sanctions or penalties for those clubs yeah. that are doing it. That's like having a rule and not enforcing it, really. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as Seamus had said, it was the GA clubs in the locality that, that came out as what Father Harry Bowen would call the community leaders. They were stepping up when people needed to. 
and Crow Park, I think, really had let down the club. Like they, we saw what they did with the Railway Cup. You know, it was once a great competition when you go back to the 70s and the 60s, mm. and it's now disintegrated and it doesn't really exist. But I don't know. They had a year because after decades, at least a decade, but if not more, of neglect, neglecting the club game, they had a chance to put it as pride of place. And they they fluffed it, so that's a, a big disappointment, I, and that that lies firmly at Crow Park's door as opposed to Clare GA. They're just following the instructions that they're getting. Um, uh, lads, um, I was at the county meeting there last night, and one of the things that came out of it was there was eighteen teams in the junior B, and there was an awful lot of disharmony that some of those players would only get one game. Uh, in con- con- compared to the senior clubs who would get a guaranteed of two games. And for uh, junior B sort of players and junior A sort of players, it's a leisurely activity. For those lads uh, paying their membership to be deprived to say that you're only getting possibly one game because we don't have refs, we don't have officials, we can't put the COVID-19 policies in place. It's very hard for those sort of players who look on and well because I'm not a senior sort of player I'm not the top marquee player in my club I'm being disregarded is that a fair point? I think that uh, I don't know if people are really studying all this uh, in detail Uh, it's going to be so hard to host all the competitions number one because of the social distancing and uh, to try and hold the games in venues uh, you're going to have to give a, a, a plenty of time between each game at the venue so that you can sanitize the venue after the first game, clean it out, wash it down, clean out your dressing rooms. You know, I, I don't know if clubs or if people involved in teams, the teams fully understand the amount of work that's going to be involved this year. Uh, and I think that's a big issue. And that's going to be a big issue for county boards and for clubs. You know, there's a lot of people uh, shouting and moaning today why isn't every underage competition from under 12 to minor being run 12, 13, 15, 17, 18, whatever? They're looking for six underage hurling championships and the same maybe in underage football. People don't seem to realise, you know, venues and, and, and how they're sanitised and how dressing rooms are prepared all come into this. Referees, you know, for the last number of years, we've all seen well, referees, the ref, a referee will referee a game, will say in six mile bridge, he'll then jump into his car and he'll go up to Tulla and do a line for another referee, do a linesman for another referee, and vice versa. That's all in a, in a different situation this year because of the COVID 19, and you have to sanitize and change gear and everything when you're leaving one venue and going to another venue. And I don't think people fully realize what's involved, you know. So I think that. Uh, people have to sit down, study all the guidelines in absolute detail and realise that there's only so much that can be done. And I think that's going to be proven in the next couple of weeks, the difficulties with running these games. Like the first weekend of, of say, the hurling, the 24th and 5th of July, you have eight senior games, you have eight intermediate games, uh, you have the junior A, junior B and junior C. Now count up all those games, all the referees and linesmen and umpires that are going to be needed. Uh, all the dressing rooms and what has to be done. I don't know if it's possible to do all that. And I honestly think that some people are jumping the gun and they don't. You know, it's all right calling for games. We all want games. And every young fellow the stair wants to be playing games. But the organisation is really going to be stretched uh, this year. And there are a lot of grounds that won't be able to facilitate those games. Like the pitch surfaces might be fine. But the dressing room situation, do you have covered accommodation? Can you let in people? Uh, Etc. Uh, COVID officers at every venue. People have to sit down and uh, really study what's involved. And I think that's going to be a huge test going forward. It's going to be the same in every county. It simply is going to be the same in every county. You know, I'm going back to the championship, even the, the arguments last night about uh, running last year's format and the year before format. I suppose Clare is unique in that they have a very, very high percentage of dual players and dual clubs. So a lot of the players involved, 50% of the players who are going to be playing at a senior level will be playing both codes. And that has to be factored in. You know, the pressure that's going to be on them playing every week, uh, you know, and all that has to be considered. And that's why the shorter format, uh, you know, I'd say was being, was being pushed or was being recommended. So there's a huge, uh, you know, I'm wary of uh, the amount of problems that could develop trying to run these competitions. 
Yeah, Paddy, I saw a news report actually on our team. Mark Marcy was at a game between an Oppel League club and I think it was a Wexford club. Uh, I think the, Wex- the Oppel League club or the home team, the Wexford uh, group came. They didn't even go into their show. I think they did the stretches beside the dugout and, and massage before the game, played the game, and they didn't even take that uh, shower after the game as well. So that's what's probably going to happen where the clubs aren't even going to be able to use the dress rooms. So it's basically you get into your car, put your, hurl, your, your helmet, play a game, and then go home. Yeah, that's the, as far as I know, no, that's the way that's the way it's going to be. Even club dressing rooms are off limits. Um, there'll yeah. be one room that probably clubs, if they had it, that would have been used as um, a physio or a medical room that will be transferred into what's now called an isolation room. Clubs um, prior to the reopening were supposed to have sanitizer units and COVID-19 social distancing signage all over their grounds as well. So, yeah, you, it'll be unusual, I suppose, for club <laughs> managers because you I, technically players aren't allowed to travel together either so unless they're in the same household so they'll have to travel separately to game so you're talking if you have a panel to 25 you could have 20 cares coming from the one panel alone and then they're meeting for the first time is, is when they're starting their warm up over in the pitch wherever that is but um, as Seamus was kind of touching on there and all with the I suppose the risks involved and, and God forbid someone involved in clear GA was to be diagnosed with COVID-19 but say for example if it was a referee you know, there's a whole element, the contact tracing that the HSE do, that yeah. every person that that individual come into contact with has to restrict their movements and to self-isolate for 14 days. So like that, if that was to happen, the whole championship itself will be, will kind of be put in turmoil, I suppose. But hopefully we wouldn't have to do that because you'd be talking members of the panel or management would have to self-isolate. And, you know, where does that leave the games then? So... I think there's just an onus on everyone involved in GA and in player GA to be restricting their movements where possible and to be obviously following all the advice that the Department of Health and Chief Medical Officer are giving out. Yeah, there's a lot of warnings, I suppose, a lot of things that have to be done, Nicholas, but I suppose uh, hopefully we can get all these games played, but as, as Seamus said, eight senior games, eight intermediate games in the hurling, and it's going to be very difficult, but they're going to, they're going to give it a right go and try to get all these games played. Yeah, I, I saw the work that went in in our own club there, in Kilnamona, two pitches to get them ready just for training. It was a huge effort, a huge amount of meetings, and everybody has to, has to know exactly what they're doing. You need COVID officers uh, and, and sanitizers, and it, it's, it's a huge logistical effort just, just to get ready for training. So you can imagine on match day what it's going to be like in pitches and how many stewards are going to meet, a whole lot of extra stewards, and everybody has to know what they're doing. And, and it has to be done properly, like, so I, I agree with what Seamus is saying, is saying there, like, you know, it, it is a, it's just a huge effort. And I agree with what the party said as well, like, the intercounty could have been left aside, could have been stood down for this year, I think, because with social distancing, it would be much easier in still a big job to do it for club games. Would It's going to be, how are you going to... How are you going to get the social distance? And it's going to be a huge, huge effort to get it for big championship games and, and uh, the amount of stewards they'll need for that and, and, and if they're going to get them. And, and are they, do, do, they, do they believe that stewards will just turn up and, and, and go into big crowds and put themselves in the front line, you know, for, 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 for games like that? So it, it could have been, you know, but it, it really does put the, put the club back into focus now. And hopefully now that, they, that, that, that this opportunity won't be lost. They, 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 I heard the uh, prominent Horner saying it would be a great time now to, to look at the, putting the club on early in the year, give them a few months early in the year, and then have the have the, have the, the, the senior championships later, the county championships later, later in the year, the inter county championships. Sorry, and um, you know, so they, they 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 really need to look at this like and uh, uh, and and see that the club is 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 is, is center, and this puts the, the club right back into into focus. But it's a, it's a huge effort. I, I, I saw the, I can see that the, the secretary, the amount of club, the amount of work secretaries have to do, treasurers, chairmen of clubs, and, and, and all the backroom team. And all, it's a huge, huge effort. I, I, and people just don't realise, evening after evening after evening, they've been up in the field, they're giving a hand, and a lot of other people as well. Like, And, and you, put, you have to put up signs, you have to put up, make sure the walkways are right, you have to make sure a car, car, parking, it, it, and toilet facilities have to be have to be cleaned out on a regular basis. And clubs don't have huge some clubs don't have huge manpower for that because people are away and people have gone back to work and stuff like that. So it's a huge effort, and you know I'm not sure that the people realise that. So you know how many games can you can 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 you cope with? 
you know, you can't cope with every game, unfortunately. You can't. You just cannot cope, cope for everybody. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I just, I, I'd have to take my head off to what I see club officials do now. They're going way beyond, above and beyond. You know, the call of duty in what they're doing. They're spending endless hours, meetings after meetings after meetings, making sure that they get this right. They can't afford to slip up. And and you know, they didn't sign up for this. Like you know, they have their they have their day jobs and whatever they have their families and they have everything and they're all coming out of lockdown, lockdown as well and 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 they're maybe entitled to go on holidays and bits of breaks, but they're they're tied to the club at the moment, uh, getting ready for getting ready for, for games, and I hope that's not lost on on people who who are mourning. I hear I hear a lot of people mourning. Oh, this isn't right and that isn't right, you know. Well, come along and fix it then if you if you you know. The, the the hurlers and the ditch <laughs> and that to, to borrow a phrase that was like you know was uh, it, it's uh, it, it's going to take a huge effort in every county to get this right and 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 uh, and, and 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 to pull it off like it's it's not that simple like COVID hasn't gone away it's 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 still a very serious problem and 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 if it gets out of hand again which you know I I I'm very fearful of you know the likes of Shannon Airport Dublin Airport people going in and out. But that's that's for the government as well as not for the GA. Like, but uh, I, I I think the big the big trick is going to be the the big inter county games and the scramble for tickets and whatever. Like you know, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, Jim, just getting your opinion on all this, and uh, do you think do you think it, it can all go off smoothly as or as best as as it can? Jim, can you hear us? Um. Yeah, I can hear you there, I suppose. Um, in, in terms of uh, that, I'm hopeful things can go to plan, uh, uh, Noel. Uh, but as you said, it, all it takes is one relapse, uh, one player from one game. And if, if a game is distorted or put back a week, it puts the whole championship in backlog. And you're really playing catch-up and you really need to go into midweek games and stuff like that. And it really brings the whole sort of scenario forward. But... Um, just in relation, if I can turn now maybe to you, Seamus, uh, the football uh, for football championship, uh, different structure this year. The groups have gone. I know Milton and Dubega uh, for both lobby that mass there last night, uh, looking for the group form as the four groups of uh, three to be brought back in terms of the football championship. But um, apparently um, groups aren't, uh, draws aren't allowed in groups and games can't be finished uh, on the day. You can't have a decisive winner on a uh, in a group game. Um, draws have to be permitted and that really scuppered the, the idea of groups. Yeah, that's right. You know, the, as I said, both um, Dunbeg and Milltown proposed four groups of three. Uh, but as Colin Brown uh, explained in detail, you know, a, a draw means a point each. Uh, you cannot, according to general rule, uh, play extra time in a group situation. It's a league for it's a league basis. So then you're into you could have a team playing their last game already out of the championship, uh, and with no relegation, there's no incentive for that team to put in any effort. And the team they'll be playing could run up a big score and they could distort the whole thing. So I thought he explained that very well. And I think that was that was a, a big uh, point uh, in people voting against that format. Yeah, as you say, it's it's a totally new format. You know, uh, 12 teams, six first round games, um, open draw, anyone can meet anybody. You know, you could have less just fine, this could be meeting in the first round. I suppose that type of thing will add to the excitement. Um, you know, you're guaranteed two games. Uh, slightly different to the hurling in that the six first round winners then play three games in round two and the three winners there are in the county semi-final. And the six first round losers then play three games in round two and the three winners there have a three-way playoff over one weekend for uh, the fourth semi-final spot. Uh, you know, with one game on the Friday evening and the other game on the Monday evening. Now, that may be able to be spread out over a week if you have no dual players involved. And you could be you could play one of your playoff games on a hurling weekend as we call it, where there'll be no dual players, but the chances of that happening could be slim enough given all the dual players that are involved. Uh, but it's going to add to the excitement, you know, the the, the, the likes of Kilmurray and Milton meeting in the first round, you know, that's obviously going to quit the appetite or Pratlow meeting uh, Milton, you know, teams that have been at the forefront for the last couple of years. So there's definitely going to be a huge excitement and, and a huge interest in the draw and how it's going to pan out 
uh, come the first round or two. But again, it's played off, completed over five weeks. All games are resulted on the day. Uh, you know, it could go down to penalties to decide your championship. You know, and there's a lot of talk in the last week that penalties could decide your All Ireland champions this year in hurling or football. And the same could happen in the county championship with no time for, 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 for replays. So, you know, that, I suppose that's another element to it. It's not something that most people uh, would like to see a county championship uh, or a, any championship decided uh, on a penalty shooter. You know, I don't think that, that's, uh, that that would be very fair given the effort that players would put in. But for one year, it's all you can do. And that's, uh, that's unfortunately the problem. But the, yes, there's huge excitement at the prospect of what will come up for the championship and what the pairings will be. And I suppose, Paddy, the draws are going to take place uh, Wednesday night. Um, it's going to be take take place. They're going to be live streamed. But just in relation to the three teams that make the county semi final, will they have a long race in terms of the four team that sort of makes it? And the four team that's coming in, they'll have been involved in a three way playoff, and they'll probably if they are a dual club, they might be carrying serious momentum coming into that semi final, where the three teams that reach that semi final probably might be waiting for the fourth opponent. So, is there an advantage maybe coming in as the four place team uh, rather than? that you're coming in, carry you that extra bit of game, um, that extra bit of championship battle, and uh, you're coming in after going through probably a two, three-way playoff, uh, coming through that, you're carrying serious momentum. Is there a bit of advantage there, or going through the straight way, being one of those uh, three teams to come through, and be getting to look at that fourth opponent, is that a bit of an advantage for the three teams that come through as well? Hard, hard to know, I suppose, Jim, what way would be the best way to come through. I suppose the main thing, um, to give you a short answer, is as long as you get through, that's the main thing. But uh, some clubs have said there's a slight disadvantage if you were to win your first game. They've said it's nearly more beneficial, talking to clubs, to lose the first round and then to get the extra game, as you're saying. But um, like if you end up, say, like Seamus mentioned, a couple of teams there, Kilmurray, Brick and Milltown, Craslow, say if they were to lose their first round and they end up in that three-way playoff, it's not easy to come out of. So, you know, it, I suppose you're, it depends on the draw to say the, the three-way playoff would be a favourable one. And then, um, but you're right in saying the more games would suit teams, but then just looking even over in Germany with the Bundesliga, like there's some studies being done on the injuries being picked up by players because of the return, you know, having not played a competitive game in so long. So then if you're kind of having to play a couple of games, so many in a shorter period of time, is that going to catch you? Whereas the teams that progress through um, from the second round straight away to the semi-final, they've time to get the recovery in and to make sure they're fit and healthy. So it's a very, very hard one. Like the argument would never be solid either way in a normal year, let alone in as Chair Lyons christened at the COVID-19 Championship. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Nicholas, in, in terms of um, the the relegation being taken off the table in terms of the senior football championship and the in intermediate side who wins it, they get promoted. There's no sort of relegation. There's no dead rubbers as well. So, uh, in terms of that, every will it, those two games, it's their, their championship lives on their line. There's going to be no team that's going to say, well, our championship is over. Let's get through this game. Every game, every game in the football. If there was a group stage, there could be a dead rubber. There's no dead rubber in this system. Yeah, and I suppose uh, uh, looking at it, I suppose it can make things more exciting. I know that, that you, you know you're going to nobody's going to go for go down, and that's that's that has to be the way it is this year, obviously. And I think that's it. It's, it, it'll be exciting. Everybody has to go. And, it, it, this is a kind of a championship, I think, where everybody has to go and win their games. And, and it'll be... And, 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 it, and that's it. And that's the way a championship should be, really, anyway. But, uh, you know, the fact that there's no one going down, this supposed makes it a bit easier. It takes a lot of pressure off, anyway, for, 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 for managers. Like, you know, no manager wants to go down and even his team to go down. But... Um, it's it's it, it it'll be a good championship, I think. Anyway, it, you know every game is important, uh, and 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 um, you know it's what 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 more what more do you want? Like in the in the year to sin it, it'll it'll be different. It'll be unusual, but for for the supporters, say you know they'll be going down to to see their their clubs and their players playing, and and, and that's what they want to see. Like we we didn't think we'd be playing a game 
a few, only a few weeks ago, I think we were, we, we were wondering what would we see again. So, I mean, we, ha we everybody has to take what's an offer now and, and, and make the most of it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think you, you, you can be arcing too much that this is the wrong way or this is the, this is the right way. This is what it is and this is where we're at. You know, and, and if your team is good enough, your team is going to is going to go a long way in the championship. And, and if your team is not ready and not prepared and not good enough, maybe, well then, you know, and that's the same every year anyway. So, uh, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's probably more difficult with the, with, with, with the football. But um, I, I, I think, I think where, where we're at, like, I think, we, I, I think we have to say well done to the county board, well done to the committee for, for uh, to, you know, when you had to sit down and try and sort, through, sort this out and see how you're going to fade in such a small window. It's a huge, it was a huge task because there's so many different scenarios. And like Seamus said there, like, you know, you, you, if you have draws and so on, uh, you know, so to work all that out, it took a huge amount, a huge amount of work, I'd say, unbelievable amount of time and, and thought had to go into it. And, and, and I think they did really well. I'd have to say that they did, they, they did really well because it must, it must be a headache where you start like to, to plan this. And what they've come up with, I think, is, is, is as good as you could get in the time in the time to see it and, and the, the time frame is the thing like the pressure of time is, is probably the thing that they had to they had to work that out so there's uh, also there's also another factor you know that a lot of people maybe haven't really considered yet there are some clubs who won't have their full panels there, there are some clubs where there's one or two players who won't be going back because of the COVID-19 because they're living with somebody who has underlying conditions you know, I know of a few players who have informed the clubs that they can't take a risk. They either have a child who has underlying condition or they live with elderly parents. You know, and a number of clubs will be short a player or two, you know, and uh, a key player in, in, in many cases. You know, and that's outside of any injuries that we pick up. So, uh, you know, that, I think that was another consideration in the shorter version of the championship that has been proposed. Uh, you know, that had to be factored in as well. And, and, and it will be, it is a reality. You know, there are a number of clubs who have, who know uh, at this stage that there are some one or two of their players who won't be going back this year or won't be risking it. You know, we've seen it at inter-county referee level already. David Goff, as I think, has said he's not going That's back. That's right, yeah. So we don't know. And there may be some in there, which will be another factor of pressure for referees as well. You know, there's, there, there are a lot of considerations that, uh, and uh, uh, Nicholas is making the point out, he's, he's 100% right, the amount of effort that the five men master sixers committee put into just coming up with this format, the amount of time and the amount of thought that they had put into it, and the amount of various uh, um, ideas that they had to, uh, you know, consider, uh, played a big part. And in, 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 I think they've come up with a, a very good proposal in the circumstances. Seamus, is there a plan B if anything does go wrong? God forbid, we hope, we hope it doesn't, but is there any plan B? I, I know nationwide there, there might be some. But in Clare, is there any plan B in case this does happen? Uh, not, that, not that I'm aware of, because you know, if if God forbid somebody tests positive from a, after a match uh, that would have been played, you know, the contact tracing, everybody that would have been involved in that game, from referee to umpires to linesmen to the panel of players to the mentors on both sides, you know, they're going to have to isolate, and they may the, the probability is that they will just have to be out of the competition because you're gone for a couple weeks. It's not a question of just the one person isolating. See, So I think people are just keeping their fingers crossed that no such uh, occurrence like that uh, will, will interrupt the competition. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what else they can do or how they can have a plan B in that situation. Uh, there's no uh, time uh, to postpone games and go. It was an ideal opportunity for the GA uh, to say, right, this is a club year. And if things went well, they could have gone on and run the provincial club and all Ireland club and finished it out and just said for one year, inter county is gone. Because, like running the inter county, uh, I don't know, has to be gained by a year. You won't have big crowds. They've already said that the maximum they'll get into Cork Park, Cork Mall Island final time will be 30,000. So your, yeah. your income from the gates is going to be way down. So I don't know what's to really to be gained by pushing. Uh, those competitions and even take the inter county football. It resumes on the 17th of October. Clare play for men in the National League. They play Armand in the National League the following week. They play Tip in the first round of the Championship the following week. 
three huge games yeah. uh, in, in, in 14 days. And that's a huge ask uh, for any county. And there are a number of counties who are in similar situations, who are vying for promotion, are fighting to avoid relegation. Right? Clare are in the position that they can be promoted and they can be relegated. Uh, so the two league games are crucial and how they'll get on in those will play a big part in the mood in the camp going into phase tip of the championship. Uh, and it's the exact same for Tipperary. They are battling to hold on to Division 3 football status. The odds at this stage might suggest that they'll be relegated. That probably won't help going in against Clare in the first round of the football championship. But there are three huge weekends. Uh, and hopefully there'll be no injuries and the players will be able to get through for that because you'll need everybody. But, you know, I don't know if the, if the full thing has been thought through to the very end by all the powers that be, but it's what it is now and we just have to uh, hope that it will work out well and look forward to maybe some great games. Um, Paddy, in relation to the minor uh, championship, the draws were made for the minor hurling and uh, minor uh, football. Uh, maybe you can enlighten us in that in relation to Clare's opponents. And will they, will those minor games be on before the senior games uh, this year, or how will those minor games operate? Will they be played in front of crowds? Um, it's very unlikely, Jim, at this stage. I'd say double headers would be a non-runner altogether. Um, for for any games, it be they club, be they county, um within within county level, within club level, um I'd say it's just to to try you know to minimise the risk I suppose that that we were talking about, but um just on the draws themselves, Clare are going to play Cork in the Munster Minor Hurling Championship. The winner then advances to play Limerick in the last four. Um, the minor football is the same as the senior football. You'll have Clare playing Tipperary in the quarterfinal and then progressing to play either Limerick or Washford in the semi final. So, a good chance for them to hopefully get to that Munster final. And then in the under 20 hurling championship, Clare will be away to Tipperary in the quarterfinals. That's obviously a knockout. And uh, the winners facing Washford in the, the next round. And interestingly enough, with that, that particular bunch of under 20 hurlers, they didn't play minor county because it was under, that was the a grade that was when it switched from under 18 to under 17, they lost out. So I suppose it's a bit of relief for them in a way. There was the prospect, obviously, as we said six weeks ago, that they wouldn't have got to play minor hurling for their county or under 20 hurling for their county. So um, Sean Dyle and the lads there will be hoping to make the most of it in, in that. And I suppose, uh, Seamus, just in terms of that minor championship, the teams that say if Clare make the Munster Hurling minor final or Clare make the Munster minor football final, do they have to win that Munster final to progress or is there a quarter final for the losing Munster, uh, Munster finalists or is it just the provincial champions go straight through, uh, a Munster, uh, to, through an All-Ireland semi-final? Yeah, as far as I know, there are no second chances at minor level. Uh, and if you're beaten, you're out. As far as I, that's my understanding in minor hurling and minor football, simply because the time isn't there. And the other thing that's going to be coming in, even though there's no talk of it yet in detail, but obviously your colleges will be back and there'll be talk about college games. I see already St. Brendan's and Killarney and Tralee CBS so, uh, and now it's, that there's no uh, consideration being given to finish in last year's colleges championship for which both and qualify for the All-Ireland semi-finals. So I'm sure that Whatever about last year's, there will be an effort to try and organise this year. So that's going to affect minor competitions and how they how they work. And you know, the, as the year goes on, if as we hope there are no relapses with the virus and everything goes ahead, there'll be more and more calls for colleges games to resume and the new third level colleges coming up. And as this championship is running right up to Christmas, you know, there's, there'll, there'll be a lot of demands. So. Uh, I, I, I presume that was factored into the format for the minor, uh, you know, and that the minor is not out, uh, no second chances. So. And on that, Seamus, I suppose it's um, a big disappointment that you mentioned the colleges that we don't, St. Flannan's College won't get to finish there. Um, the Dr. Crow, com Dr. Crow Cup campaign, um, they had got to the semi finals of that. They were due to play St. Raphael's College in yeah. Rye. They, they were a fantastic team to watch all year, and, you know, considering only two games left to play in that competition. It's a bit, again, 
not to be knocking Crow Park again, but it's disappointing that the decision was made um, not to proceed with that competition with only two games left, because I know the post-primary council had lobbied to try get the competition played, but the decision was made from hierarchy in Crow Park not to go ahead with it, which has been described as bitterly disappointing by people. Yeah, I agree I agree with your party. It's a huge pity because that was a particularly good St. Fennens team. And as we all saw, there were some outstanding games that had won a great Hartley Cup championship. They'd come along in and beaten, I suppose, the kings of colleges holding of recent times, St. Clearance and the Canal Island quarter final. Uh, and they were really looking forward to finishing off the year. It's disappointing for the players involved. You know, you don't get too many chances to win Cork Cups and to win an All-Ireland College's title. Uh, and it, it often is the, 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 the basis for inter-county achievements down the line. So, you know, for those group of players, it is, it is disappointing. Um, you know, but many of those players uh, are still eligible for the coming year's competition. So, uh, you know, that will be factored in, I suppose, as well, when that get underway, hopefully it will. And uh, Nicholas, uh, just uh, finally there, just in terms of the underage uh, competitions, uh, in terms of underage hurling and uh, underage uh, football juvenile co- co- competitions, uh, the, the Borna Nog and Borna Pell, they're sort of in a rush in the same sense because they have to get those competitions finished before the minor county, uh, minor inter-county hurling and minor inter-county football start and same way the under-20 inter-county hurling. So for club players as well, I suppose, Seamus, that aren't, uh, aren't inter-county uh, players. They're going to be have a jam-packed uh, schedule in terms of games on, in a short space and the, the risk uh, for those club players is that they might only, it might be straight knockout in those uh, grades in underage hurling and underage football. Yeah, maybe. I know that the, the, at an executive meeting of the county board a week or two ago, it was decided that each of the board and overs would run two competitions each. Uh, and in football, it's under 14 and under 17, and in Holland, it's under 14 and under 18. Uh, and the, under, the football is due to start on the, 20, the week of the 22nd of July, I think, that week, and the fo- Holland the following week, uh, you know, with under 14 on Monday evenings and the under 17 or minor Holland on Wednesday evenings. Uh, but they're under pressure to get those. I think they've spoken to both county managers. Uh, and they've uh, agreed a format where they'll get those games played off before the players are pulled in for the county tr- uh, training for the upcoming Munster Championship. So uh, th- there isn't that big a window there. You know, I know, as I said at the outset there, there's been a lot of demand from different uh, clubs looking for underage hurling and football at all grades. I-, I don't know how that could happen. And I don't know how it could be done because there aren't enough venues, there aren't referees, there are, they're just simply... Uh, it, it wouldn't be a, uh, it wouldn't be a runner in my opinion because you have crossover players you have under 12s playing on some under 14 teams and 14s playing on some under 16 teams etc and it's there uh, you know that issue is there so I, from what I know the board and those consulted widely they sat down with the county executive because the county executive made the decision as to what would be run uh, you know and I think if they get two competitions each run off this year I think it'll be a great achievement. And uh, Nicholas, can I just ask you, what's your opinion on how the underage teams are uh, championships being run? Yeah, well, I suppose, uh, like I said already, and everybody seems to be in the one page here. Uh, you know, the, the way it's been organised at the moment is the best that we can we can expect, and 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 people can't expect miracles. And Seamus pointed out there, the venues aren't there, the manpower is not there, the referees are not there. You're going to have a lot, you have, this has to be well stewarded now. It just it isn't just turn up at, at a venue and you walk in and, and and you know, and the players have to have to be organised. I got help the mothers and the fathers anyway because they they can't even have a shower after the match and they have to ship they have to they'll have to ship them around, you know, to all sorts of venues in a short space of time as well. So, but and and the other one I feel sorry for in, the, in all of this I don't know if it's, it feels sorry for but it's got to be a lot of pressure on managers. Because they don't really know who they have or what what team they have, who's in form. You know, all managers of all grades like you, they haven't seen any games. They haven't seen they they have only a short time with them in training, and and there's going to be an awful lot of disappointed young young players and and older players because the manager will be under pressure. He can only pick fifteen, and he doesn't know who's in form and who's not in form, and and and, and he's going to have a, a huge balance in act. 
to do to try and 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 and, and put out his best fifteen and 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 his best five subs and, and, and that as well. So there's all sorts of problems for everybody. So we do, we all have to kind of stand back and appreciate what has been done so far and what will be done, and and and, and just go along and and just realise that it's not going to be perfect, but it's the best we could we could hope for. I, I remember talking to uh, Ali Breen there from Kilmehel there. And he's, he he would have gone. He said up to Derry to see an under an under an under uh, twelve game, you know, if that was if that's what it took. So no, we're going to we're going to have a good lot of games. We'll all get to see matches, and as many people as possible, it get to it get to play in matches, and that's what and that's what it's about. And I think well done to everybody involved. To, it, it's it's just a huge thing to do in this short space of time, and 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 you know, it ha- everybody has to be ever mindful of how serious this disease is and, and how careful we have to be in our own people and, and we're looking after young people especially you know at the GA it's a big it's a big thing like you know for, for clubs to take care of everybody and, and everybody should be patient and and, 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 and it's not easy. I, I was in town today and was queues everywhere. I couldn't get into the bank. I couldn't get in to, to use the toilet facilities anywhere. That's hugely frustrating. And that could spill over outside dressing rooms and and facilities and that as well. So just to be patient, that's what I would say anyway. Right, and I suppose with this break that we've had, I suppose it's only the learning for the for the game. It's just even going even longer, Nicholas, isn't it? Just the love for the game is back back for you, isn't it? Uh, so, uh, say that again, Noel. I say with this long break, the, it's just it's just the the love of the game. You like the way that the big big dis- distance between no game. It just shows that the love of the game is still there for you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean. It was heartwarming just to just to just to look down at the pitch doesn't it and see and see them training like it was great to, it was great. I remember St Patrick's Day this year. I, I, I came out of my house. The church was closed, the pub was closed, and the GA pitch was closed. And I tell you, I, I was depressed that day, like but the, you know, because we didn't know what was going to happen, where this was going to go, you know, and, and, and everything shut down. You couldn't go beyond two point five K. And I tell you that was a depressing day for me anyway, I'm sure for for lots of other people. So to be in the position where we are now, to be able to go along and, and watch a game, whether it's a junior B game or a senior game or an underage game, it's it's absolutely brilliant in my opinion. And uh, and and people love their games, they love their sports, all sorts of sports. But GA, you know, we really do. We really love the game. And I suppose now, I really got to appreciate just sitting above the pitch there watching whatever game it is like, because I wasn't able to do that all summer up to up to now. So I think most people will really appreciate you now to be able to go into games and, and to see the camaraderie we have amongst, as I'm a supporter now obviously for many years, and the camaraderie we have and the crack we have and the fun we have just going to matches. Like, it's a huge part of our culture, a huge part of our, of our DNA. Like, and it was taken away from us there for a while. Like, so now it'll be nice to go to Mets Sunday morning and go to Mets Sunday afternoon and have the roast and maybe have the roast for the after or whatever. Well, you know. well said, yeah. well said, Nicholas. To, yeah, well said. I think we're out, just bang out of time there. I think uh, Jim's giving me the signal. But uh, that's all for this evening's show. Thanks to Nicholas and Jim. A big thank you to our guests, Shaman Hayes and Paddy McMahon. Uh, this show will repeat on Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. The show will also be available on the RCB Sport YouTube channel. So for me, Noel Green saying good night and continue listening to a local community radio station, RCB Radio. Hello, good evening and welcome to the RCB.